If you like the tips in this video, make sure you check out my podcast, Music Ed Tech Talk. You can find it at musicedtechtalk.com. I also blog about this stuff at robbieburns.com. You can buy my book, Digital Organization Tips for Music Teachers, from Oxford University Press or Amazon. Hey, it's me, Robbie Burns, and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a project I have been doing with my general music students in Soundtrap. Last week, I tweeted about a song remix assignment where I had taken the vocal track of a popular song, stripped it from the recording, and then made it the basis of a Soundtrap template where I set the key and the tempo so that all of the loops that my students dragged into the project would sound more or less like they matched. This tweet also included a thread of some of my musings on the subject of music theory and how to teach it to kids, but that's besides the point. What I wanted to do today is respond to a few requests that I explain how I strip the vocal track from a song and then set it up in a project template using Soundtrap. So let's go ahead and begin. The first thing that I do is hope that I have the song, but if I don't, there are apps that can help. This is a recent song that I assigned my students, and you can see here that I don't have the song, so I'm watching it on YouTube. Now, there are a handful of great apps that can download a YouTube video. I'm going to use a Safari extension called Downy, which is a great app for the Mac that can take audio and video from websites and download them to your computer. But another good one that's free is called VIDL. That one works strictly on YouTube videos. So let's use Downy to take this file. And it's going to tell me that I already downloaded it. We'll do it again so that you can see what it looks like. Now, this app was set to download it as a video. I actually want it as an audio file. There's a setting you can change, but because I didn't choose the setting in advance, I'm just going to go ahead and use this same company makes another app called Permute, which is a great file converter. And I'm just going to drag and drop the downloaded video on Permute. And then as you can see here, really similar user interface. I'm going to go ahead and turn that into an mp3. The result is downloaded to my downloads folder. The next thing I need to do is strip the vocal part out of this. And for this, I'm going to use an app called Neural Mix Pro. Now this app costs some money. So just know that this is quite an investment. There are some other ways you can find isolated vocal stems. One of the places I like to go is a subreddit called Isolated Vocals. You can request and share your findings there and typically people are really helpful and friendly and you can get a lot of really great stuff. For me, I'm gonna just drag my resulting file into the app and as you're about to see, I can independently control the volume of the vocals, harmony, and drums. It's not perfect, you know, you can hear the drums a little bit in the background of the vocal line, and some of the frequencies get cut out when you isolate just one of those three musical components, but it's perfectly fine for the kind of project that we're doing here. So what I'm going to do now is export this song. Now in the export menu, you know, the song fortunately is 82 beats per minute, and Neural Mix Pro has told me this as well as the key, which is D minor. Some songs have weird tempos, like 82.6 beats per minute. And you can actually, on export, select the tempo. So if the tempo of the song was a you know something strange like 82.6, I could just change it to 82. And the Neural Mix Pro will actually adjust the entire vocal track to that tempo as it's exporting. I can change the key too, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and just click Export. And then the resulting file is in my Downloads folder. Let's hide on into Soundtrap, but first I'm going to go to my learning management system, which is Canvas. Now, when creating a new assignment in Canvas, you can actually link the assignment out to an external tool. Most learning management systems will do this. Google Classroom, Blackboard, 
there's a special type of technology that is used for integrating external tools like Soundtrap. It's called an LTI API. And it basically means that even though I'm showing you this in Canvas, you can do something similar even if you're using another classroom learning management system. So I'm going to go ahead and call this assignment High Hopes Remix. And then I'm going to go ahead and then give it some description, but I'm not really going to do that for now. Let's just go ahead and give it a point value and a due date, the bare minimum there. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and choose the submission type as external tool. And then you'll see here that the way that, at least in Canvas, you link an external tool is by choosing Soundtrap from this menu of options. And then Soundtrap will actually open within the learning management system, at least in the case of Canvas. And what I'm about to show you, you can do this all in Soundtrap in advance and then select your project as the template you want the students to see when they launch into the external tool. Um, but what I'm going to do is just do all of the work right here from the external tool configurator. Canvas has this weird bug where sometimes you have to click twice to get Soundtrap to correctly load. And then I'm going to choose a music project. And then this is the fun part is we're going to actually set the settings of the song to the same specifications that we exported our vocal track. So I'm going to go ahead and choose D minor. And then we're going to go 82 beats per minute. And then by automatically dragging in my vocal track, Soundtrap will make an audio track for me, which contains this vocal data. Now here's the deal. We want this to actually land on the beat. We want beat one of the vocal track to be beat one of one of the measures in Soundtrap. So I'm going to turn on the metronome so I can better clear this up. And then I need to be able to drag this audio file left and right, because as you can see, we have about six measures of nothing here. So I'm going to go ahead and clip the audio file a little bit. Okay, so high, the word high hopes is the downbeat. So that's happening about right here in the track. So I'm going to make that land. We're going to try to get that to land on beat one of measure two. All right, so we're going to have to clip this a little bit. All right, so if we want that intro part of the voice, which I kind of do, we're going to have to create a little bit more room. So let's go ahead and get high hopes on the downbeat of beat measure three. Now, Soundtrap will respond in better detail if you actually zoom in a little bit. I'm just pinching my trackpad to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and find the word high again. So high is right here, so I want that to line up with the three. A little too early. Now, what the students are going to do is actually drag in loops, but let's just drag in a couple of loops now to see if the beat is sufficiently aligned. So let's go ahead and search for, let's do some drums. Drag that in. So the vocal line is a little early. So let's go ahead and zoom in there just a little bit more. Drag it just a little bit further to the right. Test again. If you're happy with the way that the drums line up, you're going to go ahead and, in my case, delete them. In fact, I'm going to delete this whole track because all I want the students to see is the vocal part. Once that's done, I'm going to save it. First, title it High Hopes Remix Template. And then once you click the Save, button, there will be an option in the file menu to attach it to the task, which is grayed out because I didn't allow it to finish to save. But in your own time, once you save it completely, this will appear 
darker so that you can actually select it. And then what happens is that when your students open this assignment in the LMS, there will be a button that will basically take them into Soundtrap and it'll look exactly like I've just set it up. And then of course they will go to the file menu once they're done and they will have an option to submit the assignment. And then what's really nice is that Canvas will display them all for me in a speed grader where within the context of some grading tools and some comment tools, I can even actually put a rubric in this area and tap the different blocks within the, you know, the, the grid of the rubric. I can actually just see the entire project right in line that the student has submitted and then hit the play button. And that is how you make a Soundtrap Remix assignment. Hope this has been helpful to you. Let me know if you have any questions. I'd love to hear from you.